The Democratic Party divided as a major blow is dealt to Joe Crowley in New York, the longtime lawmaker, the leading contender to replace Nancy Pelosi, ousted by a political newcomer who is a Democratic Socialist. So as the midterms close in, is this surprise upset foreshadowing what's to come for more of the old guard of the Democrats in Congress? Here now to debate is liberal analyst Kathy Aru and New York State Assemblyman Kieran Lawler. Guys, thanks so much for coming on this morning. Kieran, we're seeing this this great divide in the Democratic Party. It's becoming more clear now. Um, the Democrats, though, uh, the old guard, as we should say, not really comfortable with embracing this style of socialism, this Bernie Sanders-esque kind of I idea. Uh, should they be? Well, you know, I, I think they're not comfortable with the label because voters aren't comfortable with the label. But if you go back three years when Debbie Wasserman Schultz was the DNC chair, she was asked, what's the difference between the Democrat platform and socialism? And she couldn't really give an answer. So I think the platform is the same. It's just uh, this this woman in Queens, uh, she's, she's not afraid to call herself a socialist, whereas the Democrats have the same policies, more or less. But uh, they know that it's going to hurt them at the ballot box to label themselves as such. Kathy, free you know college, free health care, yep. ending ICE, you know, ending all border control. Uh, this doesn't resonate very well with the majority of Americans. What do you think? Well, it resonated with the Democrats. It's the Bernie message that it seems like millennials are responding to. And she went to Twitter. It was a grassroots campaign. So she said all the right things. And it seemed to work for her. But people are also suspecting, some of my sources think that she got some, some money from Republicans um, secretly that wanted her in the, prime, in the um, midterms because Crowley could not be beaten. So this is a huge upset for Democrats because uh, many believed Crowley was too strong and perhaps Republicans helped her win. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So um, it, it was also very low voter turnout there in that district as well. Uh, really bad. Uh, let's talk about uh, the president and uh, the Trump momentum when he backs somebody. Uh, Dan Donovan in Staten Island beat out Michael Grimm, who despite being a, a convicted felon, is very popular in that area. You also had McMaster in South Carolina get beat. Kieran, uh, Trump uh, has his message back on track. Absolutely. You know, if you want to win a Republican primary or a close general election, you want the president of the United States on your side if you're a Republican. You know, he has 53 or 54 million Twitter followers. So that not only uh, gets voters in your district out to vote for you, it could lead donors to donate to your campaigns. You can get your message out more. Uh, you definitely want to run with Trump on your side. And you saw he defeated, he single-handedly defeated uh, a an incumbent in South Carolina in a congressional primary uh, with a last last minute tweet the president did. So it's powerful. Uh, the economy is roaring. Uh, he's beaten back many of his critics. The Russia probe is, is looking more and more like what he's called it, a witch hunt. And uh, he's strong. I don't think he's ever been so strong. Kathy, what do you say to the president's momentum right now? Uh, well, Mitt Romney's doing great in Utah, and Mitt Romney's never been a huge fan of Trump's. So uh, we'll see. The momentum's good, but still the primaries. We don't know what's going to happen. Maybe that blue wave will come. We, we, we don't know. But um, Mitt Romney, not a fan of Trump's, and is doing quite well. So let's, let's see if it um, hurts or helps to be Romney's a Romney's also person. perfect for Utah, and he has all that name recognition as well. Right, I can't right. see him losing no matter what he says. But that's true. Everyone does love Mitt Romney. That, that Kieran, um, you've got this great divide in the Democratic Party now. You've got the far left wing and then you've got the moderates. What does this do to the midterms? You know, I think it makes it very tough to uh, get everybody on the same page and take back the House of Representatives, which has been their goal for the last two years, uh, when your party is divided. You know, are the are the Joe Crowley people in Queens going to come out and, and support this uh, uh, new candidate, Ocasio-Cortez, in, in November? She's probably going to win. It's an overwhelmingly right. uh, Democrat district. But um, if I'm trying to take over one of the legislative branches, I want everybody in my party on the same page. And this late in the game, they're tearing each other apart. Yeah. Kathy, last word. Yeah, the parties are divided. I think that's what we found out in the primaries. Both parties are divided. So this is interesting. They, they certainly are. As we've seen with immigration, the Republicans are very divided as well. I would just say yeah. this. President Trump, 87 percent of Republicans support the yep. president. So I, I don't think there's as much division on the Republican side as there is on the Democrat side. OK, mm -hmm. we'll leave it there, guys. Thank you so much.